My review of emancipation would consist of some technical as well as non-technical or should I say artistic aspects of the movie. So let us begin. First of all, the drone shots in this movie galore. <laughs> Almost to the point that it seemed like the director is just showing off his drone shots. Oh, look at me. I know how to use drones in the movie. <laughs> it was like abundance of drone shots in the movie. At some places, the use of drones looked fine and at other places, it didn't. Secondly, the style of color grading which they went for in this movie is quite, how can I say, weird slash experimental. I mean, some of the scenes in the movie would have minimalistic color, like you would only see grass or blood that would have color and other things would be almost black and white. But for other scenes, the color would seem to have pretty much gone, almost like everything is black and white. I would say this, just like drones, this experimental style of color grading looked really good for some scenes in the movie, but for other scenes, it looked rather weird. Now, let us talk about some artistic aspects of this movie. First of all, the subject matter slash story of this movie. The movie is based on real life events, but regardless of the fact that whatever they have shown in the movie is completely accurate or not, I mean, for a guy like me, it's really besides the point, given that I don't know what has actually happened in America in 1800 something. So an audience like me sees the movie from an overall perspective and appreciates what they have tried to show in this movie regarding that whole slavery thing in those times. And I would say they have done a good job. Now the question, whether overall this movie works or not in a pure movie sense. The actual runtime of this movie is around 2 hours and 5 minutes, excluding the credits which really should have not been the case. To me, the content of this movie is basically 1 hour and 30 minutes max. But they wasted a lot of time in unnecessary scenes. And trust me, those were really unnecessary scenes. To me, they stretched this movie beyond 2 hours for no particular reason. And just for the sake of having a 2 hour historical movie, Really, that's how I felt. You know, some of that wasted time was spent in showing off drone shots, which I've discussed earlier in the video. <laughs> I mean, the time wastage in this movie is a real factor. But having said that, once around 60% of the movie goes by, it starts to pick up. And it really picks up in a huge way. Now, there is something which I will mention just vaguely for the sake of not spoiling anything. At that 60% mark, the wife of protagonist does something so unnerving. Now, I won't say what she does and why she does, but she does something so frightening that the audience just wake up. I mean, prior to that point, the movie looked so so to me, but that scene just changed the whole outlook of this movie for me. And from that point onwards, the movie actually gets into fifth gear, like things started to happen. And there is a war scene in the movie towards the end. And that was one good war scene. Really a well-made war imagery that has been created by the director. I really liked that whole war scene. The sound design of this movie really shined in that particular scene. It is something to be seen at high sound volume of your home theater. <laughs> now let us talk about our protagonist in the movie, which is performed by Will Smith. Two things I liked about his character in the movie. Number one, the African American accent. Actually, it is kind of an accent that someone from Africa would adopt who has just come to America. But the point is, that Will Smith did not lose that accent even for one second in the movie. He just did not go out of character for a fraction of second. Speaks volume of his acting prowess, really. Of course, we all know how good an actor Will Smith is. 
and number two, the whole look which they have given to Will Smith in this movie with his French beard really looked good. It suits him. <laughs> Talk about rest of the cast members of this movie. To me, they did not shine. For instance, Ben Foster had a really strong role in this movie, but I don't know. I did not like his acting at all. Maybe he was portraying the character in a particular way or something, but whatever he was doing, it neither looked good nor convincing. That's for sure. I say it's a movie with a very strong lead role played by Will Smith and all other actors in the movie just did a side job. It really looked like that. The work done by director of this movie also needs to be acknowledged, I feel. Direction was on point in this movie. Some of the scenes in the movie really had the panache that you would expect from a highly experienced and skillful director. Antoine Fukua is quite a force to be reckoned with, really. I mean, he already has some great movies under his belt like Training Day, released in 2001, the Equalizer 1 and 2 released in 2014 and 2018 respectively and The Magnificent 7 released in 2016. So yeah, it makes sense that he would direct a movie like Emancipation. And finally, thanks to the last 40% of its content, impressive lead performance by Will Smith and some new and experimental techniques being adopted in the movie which occasionally looked good, I say Emancipation overall is a good movie and definitely worth a watch. Just ignore the first 60% of this movie and you'll feel pretty good.